Hi, I'm Peter Kelmstrom of Kelmstrom.com Business Solutions. In this demonstration, I'll show you how to import some data from an Excel spreadsheet into a SharePoint list using PowerShell. I've done several other import videos using Microsoft uh, Access and using the wizard and some other tools like that. But now I'm going to just do it in PowerShell. I'm going to be using the batch functionality of the new PNP PowerShell version. So first of all, let's just create a new data list here. So a new PNP list data, and it's going to use the generic list. So that's done. So now we're going to create these columns. So all of these columns will have to be created. And boring, repetitive stuff I like to automate, of course. So now I'm going to write the same kind of code over and over again, eight times, because I'm going to create these as text fields first because that's simpler. I'm going to do this a quick video, the quick import. So I'm going to create these as text fields and then I'm going to change them uh, afterwards because that makes the import so much simpler. So first we're going to create these. So let's go over to PowerShell here and let's just do that side by side. Remove the Explorer there and then we're going to add a PMP field. and We're going to add it to the list data that we just created. I'm going to use the single quote um, there. And the reason for that is that I'm going to build all of these field creation code using Excel. And Excel uses double quotes to delimit text. So that therefore I'm using the single quotes here. So I want it to be of the type text. As I said, I want it to be displayed to default view. And then I want the internal name to be, in this case, now it's going to be the first one is going to be year, of course. And then the display name is going to be the same. So that's the code we're going to be doing over and over again. So I'm just going to actually put a, a semicolon on there because that means that I can continue writing on the same row. You don't need the semicolon in PowerShell, but if I do, then I can continue on the, uh, with the same code on the same row and it's not considered the same command. So all of this now I'm going to, so I'm going to create that in Excel. So I'm going to make that into a formula and say that I'm going to build a string here and then I just paste that whole thing in there and then put another double quote. So now I have that, it's just outputting all of that. So let's go into Excel here. But instead of year now, I'm going to put the double quotes, ampersand, and then I'm going to jump out and get the B1. And then I'm going to do another ampersand and then the double quotes. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing again here on the year there. So I'm getting to the point here quickly, I promised. And then B1 again. There we go. So now we have that code. Now that I'm, I'm referencing that cell, which is six, seven columns to the left here. So now if I continue dragging to the right, you'll notice that I get, now it's referencing all the way over to J is too much so let's remove one here but this is the last one the amount that's the last one so r is the, the last one we want to go to we can widen the r column to make this very visible there we go and let's make sure these are all left aligned so that we can read it there we go this is the last column now so now we have all of these columns here and now i can just run that code let's check it out paste it in there and I see that it's perfect the same thing there and then it continues now another trick that I usually do if, if you don't if you want to have this a bit more readable this becomes very unreadable of course I'm gonna add, change the formula so I'm just gonna set a star at the end of it like that now I can just do a control shift right arrow and then control R to fill it out so then now I have the same kind of code again but now I have it with a star at the end that means that I can go into Word and do a replacement there. And Word is really good at doing replacements of text, of course. So let's view this and go to the draft mode. And then we paste that. There we go. There we have all the data, but that's not how I want it. I want it as text. And now I can go in and replace the star with more here, special paragraph mark. Replace all. There we go. Now that's the data that we have. Now we can just go in and remove that space also there. Just copy that in there, that space that I had there, and then we replace that with nothing. Replace all 
There we go. Now I have the code. So now I can take all of that code there and copy it in to Visual Studio Code, paste. That becomes very readable and should be working just fine. So let's now add that, adding all of these columns. I should be getting error messages already and I'm not, so I guess it's working. So now we're going to do a similar thing here for adding the, the uh, rows. So when you're adding to a list, then of course you're doing add. Okay, not down there. Now you see all my columns have been created all the way down to an amount there, so that works fine. Then we're adding, we're going to add PNP list item to the list data. And again, I'm going to use the single quotes. And then we're going to uh, supply the values parameter. So I'm just going to put that into a variable there, val. So that's the code that we want. But of course, now we want the code to be quite elaborate because we want all those columns to be added there. So let's do all of this in one row now. First of all, we're going to declare that val variable as a hash table like that. And then we're going to add to that hash table. So now you see I'm continuing with a new command on the same row because I'm going to be building this up. So and now we're adding val plus equals. That means that I'm adding to the hash table and I'm adding a new hash table to it. And then I'm going to add the title equals and the value. It's going to be, let's do uh, one, one, for example, that's going to be the first one, right? So this is the code that we want to repeat all over and over again. So let's do that. So uh, let's do this one here, this bit. We go over here and now I'm going to make the same kind of thing. I'm going to do a formula there and add that bit there. So that's what we're adding, right? We're adding a hash table using the title in this case. And the number one is going to be not number one, of course, because that's going to be the number. So there. And instead, we're going to have this there and there. All right. So now we can fill this down and see that, yes, it's working. You see it's picking up that. Great. Uh, because for the first column, we do want the number one there to go into the title. So that's working. Let's widen this a little bit just to see. Now, on the next one, we're going to do the same kind of thing. Just going to copy that whole formula there. Or actually, let's just do that actually we can just copy over there and you see yes it is actually picking up the next value so that's working great that's exactly what we wanted to do but we want to change this we don't want to put that in the title now we want to put that in the year so we want that column but the first row so therefore we're going to do the column b and uh, the row which, which is going to be locked that's why we're inserting a dollar there and it's the b1 so now we're just going to reference that. And of course, we're going to do the same thing with a double quotation marks. And then up like that. And then a double quotation mark again. So there you see now it's referencing the year and the 2023. And that works just fine. We're, so we're adding to the hash table the year 2023 there. So let's just fill that one down. You see that works just fine. It's doing the same thing. Same values all over the place. But the beauty of this now, because I did this B1 thing here, I can now fulfill all the way out to R. And as you see, it's filling out the amount 2058. So that's exactly right. Now it's a consistent area below. So now I double click there and now you see we're getting all the values there. Perfect. Now at the first one, we want to put some more in there actually. So let's go over here and put it. The first column, we want to add that part, part there. So we're basically declaring the variable every time and saying that this is an empty hash table on every row, which is exactly what we want. And then on the last one, we want to do this one like that. So I'm copying that over now. And on the last column here, after the amount, then I'm just pasting that whole bit there. And actually we don't need that semicolon there on the last one. So now I just fill that one down. There you go. So now we have all of this code here. I can just copy that code in there. To make it slightly more usable now, I'm going to do another one. I'm just gonna, uh, here, I'm gonna put that into a function, add data 
and just make uh, some of my square brackets there. And then I'm going to paste these values all the way in there. The ones I have. So there you see, it's not giving me any, any error messages. There's a lot of code here. Uh, I forgot one thing. I forgot the batch, of course. But you see, it's uh, produced a lot of code. So I'm just going to control set out of that. And then I'm going to add that bit here with the batch. So I'm going to do uh, my batch equals new PNP. PNP batch, like that. And then after all of this, I'm going to do invoke. Uh, first, we're going to call the function, actually. Add data like that. And then we're going to invoke the batch. So let's now uh, modify that to actually use batches, as I promised in the last one here, after we're adding the PNP list item. I forgot a semicolon there also. There we go. We need that, of course. There we need it because uh, this is a new command following. And here, the values there. Now I'm going to put some extra code there. Batch. My batch. Like that, right? Oh, I didn't go to the first row. I made my changes somewhere else. That was stupid. Okay, a repetition then. I add a semicolon there, and then I just do the batch, my batch, like that. All right, now I can fill it down so I have the same values all the way over, from row two all the way down. So now I can copy this whole thing here. So it's copying all of that, all of these values into PowerShell code. And then we run that thing and it's going to add all of that into my new SharePoint list using the batch functionality. All right, scrolling up, taking forever. So let's do control home. There we go. So now I can just minimize that. Now I'm going to run all of that code. And of course, this is a function now. So if I run that, nothing at all happens. It just reads that into memory. But now, first of all, we need to declare my batch. The PowerShell knows about this function and I can call that function. So now I run that selection right there. Ah, you see my problem here. That's the benefit now of using Excel for generating all of this. As you see, I have um, just declared that variable the first time. I empty the variable, so now it's being added all the time, so that's not good. So I need to put this bit in the beginning also. So let's do that real quick. Solve the problem. Let's go to the home. There we go, to the top. Yeah, this first, I forgot to fill that down. Now we go. Here we go. Now it's done. Control C. Uh, or control shift down to select all the data and um, control shift end and let's there we go paste all that so let's see if it looks right now great so now we've created all that code so 1500 lines of code of importing data and of course this is just an example of uh, how you can use this and I hope you will use it on your data and find it useful. So let's clear the screen from all these error messages. CLS, clear screen, there we go. And now we go ahead and go to the top and we run that add data function. Actually, let's clear the batch also, so make sure that happens. So now we see all of those are in the batch so what you'll see happening now is that nothing has actually happened in the list yet. The data list is there, of course, but it has zero items in it. But now if I run the last line of code there, just one line, and it will start adding all of those to, of course, <laughs> yeah, the my batch. Right there. Let's invoke that batch and see what happens there. Yeah, now it's running that, so that works better. Now let's refresh that bit. Now you see it's already created 200 of them. And if you've done any sort of 
data manipulation with SharePoint, you know that SharePoint is rather slow. So adding 400 items, yeah, it is quick compared to other things. So let's see, here's the data and there's all my columns and all my data uh, running in. The, the, in summary, what I did was I took a lot of Excel data, created a lot of rows of code. So each of the part is not that difficult, but in together it becomes quite a, a mammoth of code, of course. So now. I hope you can see the sense of it and understand each row that is just a repetition of the same thing. So that's what I'm doing. Actually, at the end now, when I am done with the import, let's go to site content so we see how many are in that list now. Should be about 1400. Yep, it is. Great. So that's perfect. Now I will go in and modify the settings on the list here. So, for example, year. All of these a single line of text now that I can probably make into a choice column. And as you see, it's picked up these alternatives that I have used before. So, so that's a one when you're doing that conversion, it actually picks up the choices automatically. So that's a benefit of doing that. It doesn't do that when you're doing it from PowerShell. So I'm doing that here. Same thing here. If I do the weekday, change that to a choice, then it will pick up those weekdays. Uh, but it doesn't figure out that this should be in order, so we need to fix those kind of things ourselves. But it, it does pick up all of the options that are available. So there we go. Those are the weekdays where we have sales in this data. So that concludes my demo. Uh, of course, I'm, I should do the rest of them, but you understand the point that I'm making here. Thank you for watching this demo.